Hello, uh, this podcast is all about the Boltzmann distribution. This guy here is Maxwell Boltzmann, who, as the title suggests, invented the Boltzmann distribution. Now, the Boltzmann distribution shows the distribution of molecular energy in a gas. Now, here is a sketch of the distribution. So, the x-axis represents the kinetic energy of the particle, and the y-axis is the number of molecules with that particular energy, or frequency. Now, there are four key areas to the curve. The first is the one right on the left, right at zero, zero, right at the origin. There are no particles that have no energy. All particles have some energy. It's impossible for particles not to have energy. And on the far right of the graph, you can see the curve approaches the x-axis like an asymptote, so it gets close, it never actually touches. But it doesn't actually touch, which is very important because, look, there are hardly any molecules with high energies, but we can't be certain that there isn't a molecule with a very high energy because there could be one just floating around, whizzing around all over the place with really high energy. And that's why the curve doesn't touch the x-axis. Third part is the average energy is just to the right of the mode, which the mode is obviously the big peak, the highest frequency. Just to the right of that, that's where your average energy is. And the final thing, which becomes quite important later, is the area under the curve equal to the number of molecules in the sample. And on this diagram, there is a shaded bit to the right of the line labelled activation energy. Now, the activation energy is the minimum energy required to start a reaction. It's an energy barrier. If two particles collide and there's not enough energy, a reaction will not occur. Energy is needed to break the bonds within the molecules, and activation energy is very widely be between different reactions. Now, the shaded area represents any molecule with an energy greater than or equal to the activation en energy, so will be able to react. Any molecule not in the shaded area cannot react. But what happens when the system is subjected to a change? First look at the effect of temperature. If something heats up, its particles gain more energy, so more particles will have an energy greater than or equal to the activation energy. But the activation energy stays the same, it doesn't move. It stays in the same place. The graph moves. But remember, the area under the graph is equal to the number of particles, which of course isn't going to change. The whole graph, in this case, shifts to the right, but the peak becomes lower, as you can see in this diagram, the pink curve. Yeah, the green curve is the normal, and the pink curve is the higher temperature. Now, the green, green area represents the number of molecules above the activation energy for normal temperature, but the pink and green area combined represents the new amount of particles with the energy, which is much more. But what happens when a catalyst is added? Well, catalysts work by lowering the activation energy. They do this by providing an alternative pathway, which we'll talk about later. Now, as you can see on this diagram, the red... Uh, label is the activation energy with no catalyst. As you can see, that blue area is quite small. But when you add a catalyst, the activation energy becomes less. So you've got a higher area and more particles, therefore, and that can react, which means the reaction is going to go faster. But how do catalysts actually work? Well, they provide an alternative pathway, but how do they do that? Well, so I'm going to use an example for this one, which is going to be the hydrogenation of ethene to ethane. As you can see here, we've got ethene molecule, CH2, double bonded to CH2. And solid nickel catalyzes the gas state hydrogenation of ethene to ethane. A very finely powdered catalyst is used, and it's called rainy nickel. And the reason it's quite finely powdered is to give it a high surface area, so lots of places where the molecules can attach to. Now, a simple model for the way it attaches is this. Ethene becomes attached to the solid nickel surface through van der Waals forces in a process called adsorption. The double bond then breaks and new bonds form with the nickel catalyst. This is called chemisorption. Hydrogen molecules that are also attached to the nickel surface becoming, become hydrogen atoms that attach to the uh, ethane. The highly reactive species attached to the surface readily react to form new products. The product molecules then desorb from the surface, surface, leaving the nickel surface free to adsorb more reactants. Remember, it's adsorb, D not B. And the easy way of remembering this, the way I remember it, is adsorption, chemisorption, desorption, catalyst, ACDC, one of my favourite bands. Now, when I've talked about um, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, and I've been referring to whether particles have enough energy to react, well, that's all to do with collision theory, which is the theory that molecules, or ions and gases or liquids, are in constant motion, and when they collide, there is a chance, this is a chance, not definitely, that they will react. 
Now, raising the concentration of any species means that there will be more particles per unit volume as the particles are closer together. The reactant species will collide more frequently, and so a higher reaction rate will result. For gases, the equivalent of increasing concentration is raising the pressure of a system. Now, not all collisions between reactants result in chemical reactions. Most simply bounce away from each other. The collisions must be of sufficient energy to activate the reactants. The minimum energy required to, for a reaction to take place is called the activation energy we've done before. This energy can be thought of as the energy required to rearrange bonds in the reactants in order for new bonds to start to form in the product. In addition, reactions occur when particles collide with the right geometry or alignment. For example, if you're putting a key into a door, if you put in the head of the key, it's not going to work. However much energy there is, you won't be able to open the door if you put in the head of the key. But if you put in the right part of the key, it will work. And the rate of reaction is proportional to the frequency of collisions that have the right geometry and are energetic enough to overcome the activation energy. Okay, uh, that's the end of my podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Thanks.